Recently, uh, a friend and fellow educator, uh, Monica Utsi, um, posted a question on Facebook, and um, I've tagged her in this post. Ask uh, one of her sons, uh, her sons want to visit the country of Guinea and Africa, on the continent of Africa, and um, and they want to learn French. <clears throat> she asked them, why would you want to learn the language of the colonizer? Um, and that's, that is a question uh, it really made me just really think and ponder why why do African Americans um, seek to learn the Romance languages, the classical language or classical language and literature? Why do we do that? Um, and I, when I reflect on that, I think um, there are different purposes people do it. I have seen people do it, um, which is a reason I don't agree with, to assimilate more, to be accepted more by whites to to hopefully be considered equal by whites and i think the problem is with that is we need to stop trying to convince whites that we're equal like that's just a journey between them and god um i think we just need to be just do you like we we need to stop trying to achieve their approval their acceptance trying to we need to stop trying to get their stamp of equality on us um and so people who learn the Romance languages and classical language and literature for those reasons, I don't think that's healthy for the African-American to do it for those reasons. Um, the reason why I don't think we should be doing things to try to prove to white people that we're equal is uh, we are equal. And if they can't see that, then that's their problem. And it's not our responsibility for them to, to, to discover that. God created you beautiful uh, and wonderful and we are equal. And so we need to just be be convinced of that in our own selves and live in that. Okay, so that's one side. Um, but I have known African Americans, I mean, I guess I will be one of them, who who look at learning classical languages, wrote the romance languages, uh, classical literature, um, just becoming literate in the in Western culture um, as a tool to liberate the African American people. And um, and that has nothing to do with us seeking the approval of the white man. But it, it's, it's almost like the equivalent of if I'm going to go live in Spain, but don't know Spanish, there's no way I could be successful in that country because, you know, everything is geared towards that language. It has nothing. I hope this makes sense. It has nothing to do with me trying to seek their approval. But, you know, um, to be able to read what I need to do, like, let's say I want to start a business in that country. I would need to know, be really master the language, to be able to read the laws and the, the legal, the legalese of that country. So to, to navigate and to find success in a country that has a foreign language, uh, we have to master the language. So it is the same for us here in America. Um, even though we were all born here and raised here, education, literacy, was not made, was not given to us. And, and sadly, even today, it's not really given to us very well. Um, so there's this constant struggle. And, uh, so I feel like if you're doing it for the purpose of a tool for survival here, and then as a tool for liberation, I think that's good. And, and I what come, who comes to mind are people like Martin Luther King or Frederick Douglass or, um, and, 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 and I said these before, but even like Huey P. Newton who was very knowledgeable about classical learning. Um, he used it as a way to be able, and he, who went on to get his PhD. I mean, they use it as a way to be able to come up with the language necessary. You know, I think about Thurgood Marshall. How could he have served on the Supreme Court and served our people so well um, if he wasn't literate in the language of Western culture? and literature of Western culture. Um, same thing with Martin Luther King, same thing with uh, Frederick Douglass, same thing with um, even Harriet Tubman, who was illiterate, but she knew about 99% of the Bible from memory. Um, and she used that as a way to navigate her way to freedom and in the freedom of her people. I think about the Negro spirituals, like that's kind of like our own liturgy um, that documents our journey in slavery. And they, that, that what the 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 literature and the language they mastered was the Bible, and it was the King James version. Um, and so, even though they were illiterate, they had learned enough of the Bible to create these songs that formed uh, codes for us to escape to freedom. So, if you're using, if you're learning 
the language of the colonizer or the oppressor as a way, as a tool, even as a weapon to fight against them. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I just think that we shouldn't get so high and mighty on our high horse thinking, I know this and I'm, and, and, and you're thinking you're proving to white people that you're equal, that that should never ever be the goal. But if you're using it as a tool to help your people navigate this crazy country we live in, if you're using it even as a weapon to fight, you know, because I think about Thurgood Marshall, his, 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 uh, language, his mastery of, uh, Western language helped him to be able to stand to fight for board, uh, Brown versus board of education. Um, and also eventually serving as, uh, the first, uh, and only black Supreme court judge. I do not count Clarence Thomas as a black Supreme court judge, but that's another topic. So, you know, all of those, all of those, it's, it depends on your reason for using it. So if, if your sons are saying, I want to learn this language, I'm going to Guinea. Well, French is a language that is spoken in Africa and most Africans know French and their native or tribal tongue. And I really think that dual linguacy, uh, um, allows them to navigate that space. Um, and it, it, it may have been very instrumental in them taking back their country. Um, from the colonizer, but yet they were left with this ability to navigate both worlds. Sadly, black people have to navigate both worlds. It is not something that I like. It is not something that should be considered a noble thing. The fact that we have to navigate a world with the people who stole our freedom and oppressed us and um, functioned as culture vultures, taking everything from us. Uh, but yet here we are and we have to navigate that and to not, um, train our young people in the language as Frederick Douglass, the language of the master. I want to close on this. One thing that Frederick Douglass used to do is he would, when he was a slave, he would sneak into his master's office and he would take out his master's ledger book. Like it was the book where he maybe listed his uh, sales of his slaves or uh, different documentations that he was working on legal, legal paperwork. And he was sneak in his office and he would copy even before he knew how to really read really well. He would copy his master's handwriting to the point where he could write exactly like the master. Now, did he use that ability to go back and tell the slave, look, I, I'm just as good as the white people. I can write like them too. And did he just, and that's where he was. Cause there are a lot of black people who are just comfortable feeling like they're um, um, competing with white people or proving to white people for acceptance. Um, did he do it for those reasons? Did he do it to flash it in front of his black brothers and sisters and say, look, I'm smarter than you because I can write like white people. I mean, cause there are black people who do that too. And they get on my nerves. No, he used that ability. He eventually wrote his own past. Cause you know, back then when you were a slave, you had to have a pass if to leave the plantation. It was almost like a hall pass. Like if you're a teacher and your and your student wants to use the bathroom, they have to have a hall pass. Cause if the principal stops them, they have to show that they have permission to be in the hallway. That that was our life for about 400 years. So a black person leaving the plantation for any reason had to have a pass written by the master. So what he did was he wrote his pass in the same handwriting as the master, signature, everything and left the plantation and eventually escaped to freedom. So he used that as a way to escape as a tool. Then eventually he used his mastery of the English language as a weapon to fight against racism um, for his people. So that's how I see you should be using the language. Um, what happens though eventually is as you use the mastery of classical languages or the romance languages of Western culture, Western literacy, um, as you're fighting for equality, something organic does happen. You, you do organically gain the respect of the colonizer. And it's not something, but it shouldn't be something you're purposing to do. It shouldn't be something you're intending to do, but it is something that happens organically and it's something that needs to happen because truth be told, white people who continue to live under this lie that we are unequal, that we are inferior and that we should be treated a certain way are living in a dark place. And even though my anger and bitterness towards them should make me not care that they're delivered from that, the grace of God in me wants me to see them delivered. 
from that because they're in bondage and they need deliverance. And God died for them too. So my thought is, my intention is not to try to help them leave that dark place. My only intention, and I think I can show that about everything I do, is to serve the African-American people. But if from that process, I also liberate white people from the dark chains of racism and prejudice, so be it.